Hello, everybody. Good morning. So today uh, we are going to continue talking about a little bit more about this topic of statistics for education. Uh, well, it's going to be applied to education. And um, in specific today, we're going to talk about <clears throat> something called uh, the frequency, not B frequency, but rather frequency, histogram, and polygon. Okay, to talk about this, first we have to clear up a couple uh, more, um, a couple more concepts. One of them is, of course, the uh, concept of histogram. Okay, now what is a histogram? Well, a histogram is going to be a way in which we're going to be able to visualize, okay, data through uh, bars. This is basically your typical type of. Um, type of charts uh, that are displayed through bars. So we're going to define it first <clears throat> super quick. It is a visual or a graphic display of data um, with the use of bars uh, with uh, different heights. This is, this is a basic 2D chart. Um, and um, that is going to be displayed in this case. For example, this is the, these values are here represented as zero um, from zero to ten. It's a height of one. From eleven to twenty is a height of four. From uh, twenty-one to twenty is a height of eight, and so forth and so on. Okay, so this is a very basic histogram. Now that we understand what it is, which is a very basic uh, concept, we're now going to talk about what a polygon is, which is also another term that we have up here, a polygon. So we're going to um, define this part. Now, a polygon, most of you are familiar with it. It's basically a shape, right? It's basically a shape, uh, something that you, that you, um, that has a certain amount of sides. It's also two-dimensional. So um, we're going to define it as a two-dimensional uh, or plane, also can be called plane, a figure with at least three straight sides and angles. Okay, so it's basically just a shape, a two-dimensional shape. So here's a couple of examples. Well, here's actually four different polygons with different amounts of sides. The, the smaller uh, polygon or the most reduced polygon is this one, which is a, a triangle. And uh, with uh, three sides, three straight lines, as well as three angles. Okay, then we, here we have an ex, a hexagon, and over here we have uh, two other polygons that are irregular polygons, but they still um, they still follow these uh, uh, these uh, characteristics of having at least three straight lines and angles. So three state sides, uh, excuse me. So uh, now we're going to combine the two of these to determine or to be able to observe. A frequency, okay, through um, through a, a frequency histogram and polygon. So check this out. This is a again a frequency histogram and polygon. And here's a quick example of that. This is how you combine it, and this is how you observe it. This is basically a way to look at the data. For example, in this case, we have the number of students, which is from zero to one hundred and twenty, and their height in centimeters. Okay. So the first one goes from 140 to 150, from 150 to 160. Okay, and the amount of, for example, the amount of students that are between 140 and 150 are a total of approximately 70-something. In the case of uh, 150 to 160 centimeters, they are, they are a little bit more than 160, and so forth and so on. So we're going to learn how to create a chart like this right here in Excel. Okay, now the first thing that I, that I want to do is I want to insert a bunch of data. What we're going to do is we're going to measure the amount um, or the weight in kilograms from a sample of 250 people. Okay, so up here we're going to put the label weight and in parentheses we're going to put kilograms. Okay, then we're going to insert um, the values by using rand between. Okay, in the case of rand between we're going to put between 50 kilograms and 120 kilograms, which is, you know, um, an amount that is rather, or a range that is common. Okay, then 
what we're going to do is we're going to copy this and then we're going to go, here's a trick to go super fast. To two, if we want 250, we go all the way to 251. A251, we go all the way down. Here we are at A251. Then we select everything and we go all the way up and we paste them. Now we have 250 values, okay, that are between 50 and 120. Okay, the next thing I want to do is that if I double click on this and I hit enter, all the values are going to change because we we're using the rand between uh, functions, so we don't want that. What we want is to keep them without changing. So I'm going to select all of them, copy them, and then we're going to paste them but as values. Okay, so I click on them as values, I paste them as values, and if I double click it, it's the value of 90 and it will not change. The same thing, 75, 105, 67, so forth and so on, and it will not change. The next thing we're going to do is that we're going to change the name here from sheet to data because I'm interested in, in uh, keeping this sheet exclusively for data. The next part that we're going to do is we're going to insert a pivot table. Okay, so we click anywhere here in this column where our data is. We're going to go to insert and we're going to go to pivot table. Okay, uh, it's going to give us the range automatically from A1 to A251. So we click OK and it's going to open another sheet. Okay, I'm going to move the sheet next. And right here I'm going to put pivot table. Okay, in this case what we're going to do is we're going to put this weight. We're going to put it in rows. Then we're going to put the weight again in values and we're going to do it again in values. We're going to do it twice. Okay, now that we have all three columns, Let's go to 150 so we can visualize it a little bit better. Right here in the rows and labels, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to group them. Okay, so right click it, and it's going to say here group. It says from 50 ends at 120 and group by 10, which is correct. So I'm going to hit OK, and 50 to 59, 60 to 69, 70 to 79, blah, 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 all the way to 100 to 120. Now here in the sum of weight, Right here, we don't want the sum. What we want is the count. How many people weight between, weigh between 50 and 59 kilograms? So what I do is I, I, I right-click it right here. Okay, and uh, right here, we're going to see value field settings. Right here in value field settings, we're going to click on count. Simple. So now we know that 34 people weigh between, two, between 50 and 59. 40 people between 60 and 69, so forth and so on. In the case of the sum and weight, I don't want that. I want the average, okay? So value field settings, okay? And here we're going to put the average, and we're going to change the name. Average of weight in kilograms. Perfect. So I'm going to hit OK. Excellent. And now I'm going to average this out because I want it to be average, okay? And I'm going to reduce the decimal point to, to nothing. I'm going to basically eliminate it. Okay, so this is 55, 64, 74, 84, 94, 105, and 116. Okay, because that's where the range is. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, open another sheet. Okay, and right here we're going to put chart. Okay, this is where we're going to finally create the chart. What we're basically doing up until this point, we've been um, just basically preparing our data. Okay? So in the first one, what we're going to do is we're going to put the weight range, which is from what to what, okay, they weight. So we're going to click equal, and we're going to take that information from over here, okay. We click on this, and then we select all of them, and we have the weight range, and we're going to put kilograms, okay, kilograms right here. All right, and we're going to wrap text, center, and center. Very good. In the next one, what we're going to what we're going to insert, we're going to insert the count of how many people. Okay, this is the um, this is what is called the um, ah forgot the name. But we're going to basically say the count of people. Okay, the count, the amount of people that weight this. So we're going to click equal. We're going to go to the pivot table, and we're going to click on this one and select all of this. So 34 people weigh between 50 and 59, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Over here, we're going to uh, do the average average weight. Okay, the average weight right there. Okay, and then for the average weight, we're going to click on equal. We're going to go to the pivot table, and we're going to click on this one and select all of these. Okay, perfect. Again, we're going to reduce this. 
okay? So we have uh, basically no decimal points because in this in this case we don't need them. And finally, we're going to talk about the um, this is something called a cumulative frequency. Uh, with this one, we're going to prove or identify what the amount of people are. And suppo supposedly, it's supposed to be 250 people. Okay, so we're going to put here the total, and we're going to prove it here. I'm going to put the sum, and the uh, if we add all of this, the sum should be 250. That is perfect. In the case of the cumulative frequency, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to select this one. It's 55. Then we're going to select the 55 plus the next one. 120, this one, plus the next one, and then we just copy everything. It's going to be copied all the way down. So this is quite simple. No, wait a minute. This is incorrect. It's uh, actually C, uh, B1, B2, excuse me, B2, and then it's going to be B2, excuse me, uh, D2 plus, I, I'm sorry about that. I was incorrect. This one, I got confused. So, and then we paste it all. And the last number should be the same as this one, 250, which means that we are correct. This is basically proving that the amount of people that we've counted so far is correct. Then finally, the last one is the percentage. How much uh, each number represents. Let me change the caps. Percentage. Okay. So for this one, uh, I want to know how many people out of this count those 34, what percentage it represents. So we divide that by the total of 250, and it's basically 13.6. But, uh, well, we're going to round it up to 14. But I want to fix the value. We talked about fixing the value last year, so, well, last quadrimester, so uh, we're going to put the money sign, money sign here, and that's going to not change the position. So now we can copy it. There we go, 16, 16, 15, 14, 15, 15, and 11. So those, that's the percentage. And if we sum everything up, if we add everything up, the sum is going to give you 100%, which is absolutely correct. Now on to creating the uh, frequency histogram and polygon. What we're going to do here is we're going to insert, okay, another, we're going to insert the chart finally. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to insert an empty chart. And the first one we're going to create is this one called the 2D column. We click on that, and it's going to just insert this empty chart. It's got no information in there, but we are going to insert it. How do we do that? Well, this is an open uh, blank canvas. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select the data. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to enter our first piece of information. It says series right there. The first series is called... I'm sorry, first the chart data range. The chart data range is this one. We select all these values and, uh, no, we select all of these, the count. There we go, the count. There it is, perfect. Okay, that's, uh, the name of this is going to be called the count. Okay, there we go, perfect. So now it's going to insert all of those bars. So for value number one, is a 34, then the next one is 40, 37, and as you can see, all of these values correspond to this. That is perfect, okay? But we still have to change these numbers. It says one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That makes no sense. So we're gonna go to select data, okay? In select data, we're going to put the horizontal axis labels. Okay, for the horizontal axis labels, we're going to select these, the ones that I chose by mistake at the beginning. So that's where these are gonna be placed, okay? And as you can see, these values are gonna change down here. They're not changing, let me try again. <laughs> Let's try this again. Here we go. Select the values, there it is, perfect. There it is, and I apologize for that. So the amount of people that go between 50 and 59 is this, 60 and 69. Now, I'm gonna give you the option to do this. You can select the, the range, okay, uh, for, for each one of the uh, columns, the bars, or you could also change them, and instead of putting that, you could put the average, which is something similar. You could put um, this one, the average weight, which is also a valid strategy that a lot of people use, okay? If you do that, then each number is going to show like this, okay? I personally prepare, prefer the previous one. Or from 50 to 59. I think it's a little more accurate. I think you have a clearer idea of what you're talking about, but that depends entirely on you. Now, to the, we've inserted the histogram. 
That's perfect. Now we're going to insert the polygon. Okay, so we're going to go select data. Okay, and we're going to insert another one right here, series number two. Okay, for this one, we're going to right here in Y values, we're going to insert the value of the count again. I'm gonna insert it a second time. Okay, we're gonna call it for the sake of this, we're gonna call it count two. Okay, count two, we hit enter and we're going to see two columns that are exactly the same. And that's fine, that's exactly what we want. Now what we're going to do is the orange uh, bars, we're going to turn them into the, into the uh, polygon. So we, hit, uh, we click on these, and as you can see, all of the orange ones have been selected. We're going to change the chart type to a line, okay? And you can select basically this one or this one, any of the two. Okay, I like selecting this one because this one indicates where each point lands exactly. So I'm going to choose that, and it basically can turned uh, the orange lines into the polygon, which is really interesting. Now, usually, the uh, the bars uh, in a histogram have to be uh, together, okay? Have to be not separated, have to be touching each other. So we double click on that, okay? And uh, what I want to do is I want to select all the bars. Now, I, all of the bars have been selected, and we click here where it's the chart options, okay? And here it says 219%, which is the separation. I want them to be separated by nothing, by zero. And as you can see, they're all together now. Now they're all they're all spreaded. If we if we click outside, you cannot see the separation. That's also not good. So we're going to show the separation by putting a line in between them. So I click on this thing, click right here, fill, and then border, and then we're gonna put solid line. We're going to put a different color. I'm choosing green, just so we can see it. And we're going to increase all the way up to two. And as you can see now, they've been separated, separated, excuse me, and now you can see them. Yeah, looks pretty good. Okay, another option that you could do is that you could also, if you click on all of them like this, you can also select one in specific and modify that one all on its own. So I'm gonna select just the first one and I'm going to change the fill for the first one, okay? I'm gonna put solid fill. Uh, it selected green all on its own. That's fine, green. Okay, the next one, if we click on the next one, we can change it. I'm going to change that one to red. Why not? It's pretty intense red. Yeah, I'm going to lower the intensity on that one. Um, yeah, let's do something like this, a little bit more orange. Then the next one. Now, this is, of course, for visual purposes. You can modify all of this stuff so it's easier to look at. Remember that the objective is for you to make this as visually as friendly as possible. Okay, always consider that whenever you are uh, drawing a chart, whenever you're creating something for other people to enjoy or to look at. Otherwise, it becomes very complicated for everybody. But that depends, of course, entirely on you. Okay, so now we have this chart and it looks really interesting. It looks exactly how I want it to look. That's fine. Now we're going to add a name. Okay, for this, uh, to add the name up here, we're going to go here to... Uh, Add chart element. And we're going to go to chart title. Chart title, and we're going to put above chart. We're going to click on that, and we're going to see this thing. We're going to double click it, and we're going to put the name. In this case, it's frequency, uh, histogram, and polygon. There we go. And that's how we can see the histogram and polygon. Now, if we want to modify, of course, all of this data, we would have to modify the pivot table is created based on the information from the weight, right? And if you want to modify that, you would have to modify the data over here, okay? And it will all be, of course, shown over here if you do the process all over again. Okay, and that's uh, basically it. Remember to um, let me know if you have any comments or questions, okay? Uh, thank you very much. Have a wonderful day.